you gotta have, you have to have purpose. There's a lot of great bands out there, but there's no purpose. There's a lot of great singers out there, but there's no purpose. I feel like people are getting so sick and tired of the plastic music that comes out. People want to be, want to be hit in the heart again. People need something soulful. They need something real. It's like they don't want to hear about the millions of dollars they have and the hoes they sleep it around with and all this stuff. Like, no, women want to be treated like women. Men need to start acting like men, and we need to start writing songs and understanding where you're at and doing something that's on a real level that people can relate to. It's like I'm not a superstar. You know what I mean? I write songs. Love songs about things that I've dealt with that I know many people have dealt with too, but it gives them something where it's like I can listen to this and I can feel at home. It's something that speaks to you. I believe music that has a message and a purpose, authenticity and honesty behind it is what's really going to succeed in the music industry. Um, to me, keep it soulful was something that I used to always tell myself to. In regards of musically, to have music that can relate to people, that can make people feel right, make me, music that can make people feel good, and also keep it soulful as a reminder to myself that, you know, no matter what I'm doing, I have to understand that there's something spiritual to it. There's something that's gonna affect somebody in some sort of way. So keep it soulful is just making it deeper than music, deeper than myself, something that can relate to people on on a spiritual level. It's. It's just the way it moves through your body. It makes you like, the way the vibrations of chords and sounds or somebody hits a nice run or somebody hits a good note or if you hear a nice major seventh jazz chord just playing, it just, when it puts you at ease and then you naturally just start moving to it. It's just, there's something very, very strong about music and very, something very spiritual about it when it's played right. I mean, and if it's played wrong, you react to it too because it hurts. <laughs> but I mean, um, it just feels right. I don't even think there's any way to describe it. You just know when it feels right and you know when it feels wrong. That's music. As a songwriter, I believe there's a lot of dishonest songwriters out there. Cats that write songs about situations that they never lived or never going to live. And they write from fantasy and things like that. And for me, it's like whether it's pretty or it's ugly, it's a situation and I have to write about it. And for me, it built my relationship because sometimes I get so upset. I'm like, God, why am I dealing with this? Why doesn't she love me the way that I love her? And it's built my understanding of my relationship with him because I feel like through these songs and through these situations, he showed me maybe this one wasn't the best for you. Maybe I have something better for you. And it's built my faith and understanding that no matter what situation I'm in, I know that. God has something that much better for me. And I keep playing these songs because it's just reminding me down the road that, hey, look at that last situation you're with and what the future holds or that other situation you're with and in God I trust and watch how things get better or watch how things get worse. And either way, I've always had somebody there for me when nobody else was. When I was younger, I just always loved to sing. I started off singing in church choirs and um, I never really thought that I was gonna end up playing music and it wasn't until I found a guitar in my uncle's bed and um, he gave me a Stevie Ray Vaughan and a BB King album and I was like, man, I just want to play guitar. I just want to do it. And I just kind of started picking it up and fiddled around. He gave me this like 1960s Gibson copycat dove and I still have it. And I played on that thing for hours and eventually just learned some basics and learned some lead, fell into some jazz music. and. Mostly started off with old Delta Blue stuff like Lightning Hopkins and um, my mom always said I was an old soul so I used to just mess around with that. It's kind of the love of blues and gospel and jazz music and kind of grew with influences there when my dad had me listen to like stylistics, Motown groups and stuff and I don't know, my love for it grew and I just kept playing guitar and before you know it started writing songs and started playing in church and different places. And it just felt right, so I just kept doing it. Nobody in my family plays music except um, my grandfather, who passed away when my mom was younger. He was a, a blues musician, and he didn't really do too much, but um, the guitar that I found under my uncle's bed was actually his, and he handed it down to me. Never had the pleasure of meeting him, but um, 
don't know, it's just kind of influence there, but yeah, nothing really musical too much in my family. Just kind of found my love for it on my own. We never had it easy. Um, it was a coping thing. You know, my parents split up when I was younger and um, it was pretty nasty. And there was a lot of family drama for me being half black and half white, you know. When you're coming in from your dad's from the Delta South and then you move up to, you know, white suburbia, you know, it doesn't really mix with the culture sometimes. And um, being blended in those cultures, it was kind of difficult for me. So one of the biggest coping things I could do was writing songs and singing. And, and um, I guess with the struggle of all that and just watching you know, my family stayed pure through it all, not letting it get to them, getting bitter. I had a really hard time with being bitter and being very angry. And the only thing that really calmed me down was um, singing songs about whatever I was dealing with and just putting my soul into it. And um, it was the only thing that really kind of calmed me down to get me away from feeling so negative about people. You know, we're all beautiful. We're all, God made us all. I think we should all just appreciate each other for who we are and just look on it and keep it soulful with a soul to soul level, not so much with what color my skin is and what color your skin is, you know? Sometimes you gotta be careful because you got some people and they see that you hang out with these cats in Detroit and they're like, oh, Detroit born and raised artist, Troy Simon. I'm like, I'm not a Detroit born and raised artist. I wish I was sometimes, but I like to call it a Detroit embraced artist because it's opened my eyes to R&B music in a real way in a reality way you know you can listen to it but sometimes when you just can't be around the artist where it really rubs off on you and makes things feel right i feel like it's made me more authentic and just to have the feeling that people believe in you that are well respected i don't feel like a little suburb kid coming down to the city they respect me as an artist they respect me as a singer they respect respect me as a guitar player and just as a young man because they see something different because i'm 20 years old turning 21 in April and there's a lot of cats that I hang out with in the suburbs and different places and they just want to get drunk every weekend they want to get high and they want to sleep with any girl that they can and when they see somebody like me who all I strive for is to be better than what I was yesterday and all that I strive for is to be better musically spiritually physically and just to gain as much knowledge as I can and they say you know there's something authentic and there's something real about this kid because he just wants to learn. And I'm not here to step back and to fall into anything. I'm only here to move forward and be a better Trey every single day. And I believe once somebody gets that revelation in their lives, that's when they really start getting to the places they wanna go. Having an idea of your identity and learning your purpose through that identity and then operating it and taking over. I mean, sometimes you get stressed because you're like waiting for the next thing to happen and you just want to keep getting that excitement because you get addicted to it. You're like, oh, I just, I feel so good. You know, I did something right. I want to do something right again. But um, with those people and with that pressure there, the only pressure I've gotten from people that are really d close and dear to me is that embrace the process. Embrace where you're at. Write a song about where you're at. Don't strive to get to the finish line because once you're at the finish line, the race is over and it's really hard to relive a race. So for me, it's just really living in this moment, understanding where I wanna be, keeping focus, but still embracing where I'm at and embracing every step. Sometimes I wonder, Trey, are you ever gonna be satisfied? You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't know. Um, it's hard to define success. God gave me a gift of playing and singing songs and writing them. And, you know, it's not for me, you know, at first it was to cope with everything that I was dealing with. But I understand that there's a lot of people out there that are angry and that are hurt. And if I can do something to make them feel that much better, whether it's just a song or me singing on stage or me just being a friend or me just being a man to somebody, I mean, that's good enough for me. So my gift is to simply give to other people. And that's what I want to do with my music. And that's what's keep me going. To always feel comfortable and to always feel challenged at the same time and you can never learn enough you can never do enough so for me it's like as long as i'm in a position where 
and never feel like I've reached the end of success is the best thing because it leaves you always striving for more. There's more creativity to be had, more to create, and I'll never get an ego because I don't want an ego, that's for sure. <laughs> I want to be somebody that people can relate to and that feel like I'm, I'm truly there for them. Fighting for